Okay, so we're officially on lesson one. Um, remember that we are starting this just like um, we would be starting to learn to read English. So you don't remember, I'm sure, when you learn to read English. But um, when I taught my kids, the first thing we learned was to identify letters. So we just learned this is an A, this is a B, this is a C. And that's what we're going to do right now is we're just going to learn, first of all, to define some of the um, items of notation, music notation that we're going to see on a score, just so we know what words to use when we're talking about things. Um, also, loosely defining um, their function, depending on, you know, which element we're actually looking at and how relevant that is. Um, we're going to be reviewing, so this becomes automatic and easy. Remember, my goal is to build a strong, strong, strong foundation. If it starts feeling easy and a little boring, that's kind of good. That's where we want to be so that we ultimately can actually interpret a score with total ease and we don't have to think hard about things. We don't have to make our brain work super, super hard um, to understand these things. So... Um, once we're able to define these things, then we're going to get to this, the, the um, point of decoding and interpreting scores. Okay, so lesson one, the staff. We're just going to read this together. Before you learn to read, you learn the letters of the alphabet. Letters are the symbols that make up words. And learning to read music is the same. Before you can read music, you must learn the symbols of music. Just as the letters of the alphabet can be combined to form words and sentences, the symbols of music can be combined to form music. When you've learned the symbols of music, you will see how they are combined to form music. And the symbols of music are placed on or between or near a group of five lines and four spaces called a staff. A staff usually runs all the way across a page like this. So we're going to number the lines of the staff from the bottom to the top. So one, two, three, four, five. And we number the spaces of a staff from the bottom to the top. One, two, three, four. I like that this book includes a written component. Um, you can print up manuscript paper for free online, or you can talk to me um, if you uh, want some help with this. But just like when, you know, kids learn to write their letters, not just identify their letters, um, it can help cement in the learning. Obviously, they can learn to read without ever doing that, or they can learn to write much later than they learn to read. Um, so I'm not saying it's a necessary component, but I think it can help cement the learning, um, even if it's sort of an imperfect attempt at it. I think it's, it's helpful to reinforce it, but don't feel compelled to if that makes this undoable to you in terms of time commitment and just you know, realistically what your ambitions are here. So we're going to just do this together. Write an X on the third line. So we're going to go one, two, three. And just like when we start to write note heads later, we're going to try and make sure the um, X goes right over top of that line. It says write an X in the fourth space. So space now, one, two, three. Here's our X. And I try to make sure that X touches the line above it and the line below it and that it just fills out that space completely. I write an X on the first line, so obviously right there. And again, I try to make sure the, the middle of the X goes right over top of the line. I write an X in the second space, one, two, right here. And then and we'll fill that out all the way. I write an X on the third line, one, two, and three, okay? The X is on which line or in which space? Obviously, this would be second line, right? And this would be the fourth space, okay? Here we have one, two, so second space. And then this is the first line, and this would be one, two, three, third line, okay? And that's it for lesson one.